Hey, it's Eddie and welcome to another edition of Stuff and Things. We're back here at the dome-shaped underground house. As you will notice, all of the curved I-beams are now in place and the horizontal beams are in place as well. Those horizontal beams actually serve as the second floor joist supports. And you'll notice one is missing way in the background. It's actually not missing. There's no floor in that pie wedge section of the house. It's actually gonna be open to all the way to the top of the dome to allow light from the cupola near the very top where that hole is up there to filter down into the back of the house. So that's intentional. What we're gonna do is we're now gonna lay a, I don't know, like 20 some odd tons of steel onto this uh, structure. Basically, we lay a row of horizontal followed by a row of vertical, another row of horizontal and another row of vertical. The first row of horizontal are actually laid into these little metal tabs that have been welded to the I-beams. And once they're in, we just hammer the tab over to hold it in place. When we finish the whole dome on the first layer of steel, then we do a layer of vertical, bars that go vertically, and then another layer of horizontal and another layer of vertical. And that's basically the dome. So let's get to it. So here we have where the rebar overlaps. And what we're gonna do is just tie it with about a two foot splice between it because we don't have bars that are long enough to make it all the way around the dome. Now what we'll do is we'll grab it, we'll pick it up and we'll wrap it around. Um, if you try to wrap it around beforehand, you'll be fighting the tension on the bar. And yes, it's that simple. Now in this next section of the video, what you're gonna see is the three of us climbing up together. What we discovered was it was much easier if we tied three or four or five bars together and then climbed up the dome, one person in the middle and one on each side, and then climbed up the dome carrying the bar with us because it was really impossible to tie those bars to each other up in the air. Um, again, if you're using a boom lift, or you got a whole bunch of scaffolding or a bunch of other stuff, it might be easier, but you're still gonna be climbing up and down the scaffolding. So this seemed to be the easiest way for us and, uh, and it's working. So we're gonna continue doing it the way it's been, the way it's been working. Okay, so let me explain how we're putting the rebar up. As you can see, we've already got all of the horizontal for the first row, or at least most of them. There's a little gap at the top and a bunch of the verticals. What we actually did was we put the first 20 feet of horizontal bars up and then put the, the first 20 feet of vertical bars up. And the reason for that is as you get up closer to the top, if you don't have the verticals in there, the rebar is too weak to actually stand on. We're actually climbing all over this thing so it was easier to do the first 20 feet, put the verticals, then continue the next batch of horizontals. And then um, the ne next what we'll do is the next batch of verticals. So kind of the order you want to do it in um, without using specialty equipment like boom lifts and other stuff, that's kind of the easiest way to do it. If you had a boom lift, you could do all the horizontals all the way to the top. So and now since we've done all of the verticals for the first 20 feet, 
what we're going to do is we're going to continue the verticals all the way to the top in the dome section and then we're going to work our way over into the arch section hope that makes some sense